Johnny. Well, we'll stop here for a noon stop, Bill. All right, Chris. Get the brandy ready, Charlie. Ladies usually like to faint after a runaway. <laughs> Taken up too much. We're, we're very grateful to you for coming to our rescue. There was no need. If you'd given me the reins in my own hands, young people are so helpless these days. Why, when I was nothing but a slip of a girl. Now, Mother, please. We haven't yet properly thanked Mr. Hale, ma'am. Christopher Hale. That's my wagon train over there. It isn't enough that the streets of Sacramento are already so crowded a body can hardly get through them. More people have to keep coming. Mother! Well, where do you think we're going to put them all? Well, I guess Sacramento will just have to grow. Seems to me there's plenty of room for it. Spread out a little. Big enough as it is. Mother, we haven't yet thanked the gentleman. How do you know he's a gentleman? Because he looks like a gentleman to me. And he was gracious enough to risk his life just to save flowers. Fiddlesticks! Our lives were in no danger, and neither was his. Mother! A man that's born to the saddle doesn't risk his life just by straddling one. Mr. Hale, I am determined to express my gratitude for your kindness, even if my mother isn't. You, uh, you'll be coming into Sacramento soon? Why, yes. Good. When you're free, I would consider it an honor if you would come one evening and have supper with me. Heather? My address is on this card. It's innocence that makes a girl so forward, not indecency. You will come, Mr. Hale? I'd be delighted. Mrs. Heather Mahoney. Mrs. Mahoney? Widow, Mr. Hale. Oh. Well, I'll send you a message when I'm free. I look forward to it. I trust you have a clean pair of boots not covered with frail dust. <laughs> speech. Words never seem quite adequate anyway when they're used to say goodbye to friends. We won't be breaking camp right away. It'll take us a few days, maybe a week, before we can sell off all the company wagons and the horses. So I'll see those of you who'll be pulling out in the morning when you leave. Well, I guess that's all. Not quite all, Mr. Hale. Oh, did I forget something? No, sir, you didn't forget a thing. And there's something we ain't gonna forget either, and that's you, Mr. Hale. And the debt of gratitude that we all owe you, every one of us. Nobody owes me a thing, Mr. Wilson. Ramrod and wagon trains is my business. I get paid for it. You ain't paid for what's in your heart, Mr. Hale. For understanding and putting up with our faults and weaknesses. For helping us when we was ailing. And for advising us when we had trouble. You ain't paid for being our friend. So we, we'd like to present to you a, a token of our appreciation. Well, you're kind of embarrassing me a little. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Everyone on the train tipped in, Mr. Hale. Even the kids got in their penny bank. So we can say it's from all of them. Christopher Hale, wagon master, doctor, lawyer, minister, friend. There's more on the other side.
with gratitude and affection. Your friends from the wagon train, 1868. <laughs> well, uh, there ain't no call for you to say anything, Mr. Hare. We all know how you feel from the way you always treated us. Well, uh, I guess that is all now, folks. Uh, uh, let's get on about our own knitting. This old turnip never did keep very good time anyway. I guess they must have known that, huh? They did. We told them. <laughs> Why don't you learn to keep your mouth shut? Well, it just slipped oh, out. You, you were in on this, too, huh? You're pretty sneaky, all of you. Well, we just wanted to soften you up so you wouldn't object to us going to town tonight. Does it do any good to object at the end of the trail? Probably not. Well, let's go then. Oh, wait a minute. Say, so maybe one of you can drop by the address on this card and leave a message for Mrs. Mahoney that I'm ready to accept her invitation at her leisure, eh? I didn't know that you had a lady friend in Sacramento. Oh, nothing like that, Bill. Just a couple of elderly ladies want to cook me supper, that's all. Oh, <laughs> we'll tell them. Yep. Bye, boys. Have a good time. Yes, of course. Good evening, ma'am. Not a speck of trail. <laughs> Didn't know a wagon boss ever wore anything but boots. Oh, yes, ma'am. I wore shoes even before I went to college. You wasted a college education just to become a wagon master? On the contrary, Mrs. O'Hara, that job requires every scrap of knowledge you can get, particularly about people. You have to know how severely to punish the bad ones, how much to help the weak ones, and how hard to drive the strong ones. And how seriously to take the cantankerous ones. Are you trying to tell me you're a wise man, Mr. Hale? Far from it, Mrs. O'Hara. If I were, I wouldn't try to bandy words with you. And I suggest you go bandy words with my daughter. You'll find it less of a chore. And she's the one you came to see anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Mr. Hale? Thank you. Well, you make your work sound so interesting, Mr. Hale. But it must be a hard life. Well, it's a little of both, Mrs. Mahoney. But I guess nothing ever comes easy that's really worthwhile. Have you always been a wagon master? No, I spent several years surveying for the federal government. That's when I fell in love with this beautiful country of ours. And decided to spend as much time right in the great big middle of it as I could. Dinner is served. My goodness, already! Well, I was so fascinated to find out how you survived the Indian attack that I, I completely lost track of time, Mr. Hale. <laughs> well, I hope I didn't bore you too much, Mrs. O'Hara, with my wagon train tales. When I get bored, I'll go to bed. So keep on trying. <laughs> well, now tell me, what time of year do you leave St. Joe's? Well, of course, the weather determines that. $250,000 in counterfeit money right there in your wagon train. Well, where could the young lady possibly have hidden it? She had it sewed under the linings of several petticoats. Good heavens, I never would have guessed it. How very interesting. It would be even more interesting to hear how he found it out. Well, the young lady volunteered the information herself. You know I never touch the stuff. An after dinner brandy, Christopher. I'd love one. You know where to leave it, Jameson. As always, ma'am. Thank you. Didn't I tell you I didn't want any? Yes, ma'am. Nobody listens to a word I say. It makes us sleep. Uh. 
Oh, but, Mr. Breckenridge, we're having a guest this evening. Hmm. A male guest, no doubt. I didn't recognize the horse outside. That's why I stopped in. Oh, please, Mr. Breckenridge. I don't think the madam would like your just barging in. Then announce me. Do you think that's advisable, sir? Make up your mind, Jameson. You announce or I barge. I beg pardon, madam, but we have another visitor, Mr. Breckenridge. Oh, yes, goodness. Oh, uh, good evening, folks. Uh, Mother O'Hara, I'm uh, glad to see that you're still up this evening. Sorry, I can't say the same. Uh, good evening, my dear. I hope I'm not intruding, but I happen to be passing by, and I just couldn't resist the temptation to take one more look at your beautiful face before I, before I retired for the evening. How, how very nice, Harry. And may I present Mr. Christopher Hale, Mr. Harry Breckenridge. How do you do? Christopher Hale. Oh, yeah, I believe you're the fellow that uh, Mrs. Mahoney told me about, aren't you? The, yes, you've stopped their team of runaway horses. I'm the fellow. Well, I certainly do want to thank you for rescuing two ladies who are very dear to me. Uh, in fact, I offered to pay you a cash reward when Mrs. Mahoney told me of your service. Oh, I find Heather's manner of reward very satisfactory and most enjoyable. Heather? Oh, yes, uh, you mean uh, inviting you into our home. Most generous of her, I'd say. Very democratic. Democratic? Oh, well, I simply meant I know what you meant. Oh, it's so nice of you to drop by, Harry. Uh, well, now that I'm here, how about a nice game of checkers? Checkers? Yes, I'll give you a chance to get even for the last two games. Well, I... I think a splendid idea. You do? Certainly. Of course, uh, three of us couldn't play together, but I'm sure our conversation's only boring, Mrs. O'Hara. It'd be very kind of you to entertain her. Oh, but, uh, but, uh... But Heather, as I was saying, this pretty young nurse, Kitty Albright, practically took over. My wagon train became to her what the Crimean War was to Florence Nightingale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the check aboard, Mother O'Hara. Sleep, sir. Where are they? Heather and that, that cowboy. I believe they're saying good night at the front door, sir. I don't know where I've had a more enjoyable evening, Christopher. Oh, I don't quite know how I can repay you, Heather. My dining room only has the grass for a floor, nothing but the stars for a ceiling. We cook on an open fire. I'd love that, Christopher. By golly, that's what we'll do. I'll see how my business goes and send one of the boys in with an invitation. I'll look forward to it. Good night, Heather. Good night, Christopher. Good night, Harry. Sir Heather, I have something to say to you. You're handsome. here, Mr. Breckenridge. I had a feeling you'd want to talk to me, so I waited for you. You're absolutely right, sir. I have something to say to you. You want to tell me how much you resent my coming here? I certainly do. Go ahead. Tell me. Mrs. Mahoney and I have been keeping steady company for over... Well, nearly steady. 
And I don't approve of another man paying her the kind of attention you were tonight. I was invited here. Were you? I don't need an invitation to visit this house. You were invited only in payment of a debt. Well, that debt has been paid, and I'll thank you to let it go at that. That had all the undertones of a threat, Mr. Breckenridge. It is a threat, Mr. Hale. Stay away from Heather Mahoney, or you'll have to deal with me. I'd rather deal with you than oblige you. Then suffer the consequences. <laughs> Did you hear a noise, Jameson? I believe I did, madam. Oh, Heather. I'm glad I caught you before you retire. What, is something wrong? Oh, no, not a thing. I just decided tomorrow night would be ideal for us to have supper at my camp. That is, if you're free, of course. Oh, yes, I am free, and I'd love to come. Good, I'll call for you at six. Please do. Oh, good night again, Heather. Good night, Mr. Nice dealing with you, Harry. Good night. Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty. I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. She wheeled her wheelbarrow. The streets wide and narrow. thought much about wagon trains before I met you, Christopher. Came out here by boat. But isn't it an awfully dangerous way to live? Certain hardships. Some of them even more hazardous than Charlie's cookie. Oh. He went to such a lot of trouble just for us. But that's what I mean. What he went through fighting that vicious eagle with his bare hands just for one meal. <laughs> Usually it's only a a vicious rabbit he challenges. I can't help wondering how the women survive such trials. Well, some of them don't. It's harder on the women than anybody. Ramrodding wagon trains is a single man's job. Is that why you're still a wagon master? Because you're alone now? Or do you stay single so that you'll be free to do the work you love? I don't know whether I can answer that question or not. I mean, I've had no reason to think about it until now. Why do you say, until now? Possibly for the same reason you asked the question. At least I hope so. <laughs> oh, my mother would scold me for being so direct. Your mother shouldn't call the kettle black. Oh, I've liked you from the very first moment I saw you, Christopher. I don't see any reason to be dishonest about it. Is it wrong to be so forward? No more wrong than this. I haven't taken any man seriously since Mr. Mahoney. That's a warning, Christopher. Because I, I like that kiss. I can't say it hasn't given me something to think about, too. In fact, I think I'd better take you home so I can start thinking about it. I'll think about it, too. Shall we compare notes tomorrow night? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I have an engagement tomorrow night. Anyone I know? Harry. Oh, you've been such a good friend for so long. Well, I have no right to object, have I? Not until we've both done that thinking. But I've got an idea. There's a benefit performance at the Opera House day after tomorrow. I've reserved a box. I'd love to have you as my guest. Possibly two days thinking might even be safer than just one. <sighs> some dress clothes for that opera. That's one thing I don't carry on a wagon. Oh, yes. Well, I can give you the name of a good costume house where you can rent anything that you need. 
You know, Duke, that's one thing I've never seen as an opera view. Can't say I have. Sure would like to see one sometime, wouldn't you? Yeah, sure would. Maybe we can find out where to get tickets and where that dress-up place is for Mrs. Mahoney. Would you really like to go? Well, ma'am, a little culture wouldn't hurt any of us. Even uh, Charles here. Oh, maybe a little dull for you boys. No dancing girls, you know. Oh, we wouldn't mind that. Well, then I have a wonderful idea. You could all join me. There's more than enough room in the theater box. Well, it's mighty nice of you, ma'am. Sure is. Well, give me a chance to show my appreciation for this wonderful evening to all of you. And especially to you, Charles, for your special efforts with the supper. You liked it? I think I can say, without exaggeration, that it was the most unusual supper that I ever experienced. Really? <laughs> I hope you let me come out again sometime. Any time, ma'am. Certainly. Good night. Good night. Good night. I can't figure out why she's still being so nice after what Charlie fed her. I don't know. Maybe I'm such a good cook, I can't cook anything bad even when I try. <laughs> That'll be the day. Either she's not a snob like we figured, or she's just being on her good behavior on account of Chris. Well, when we go to the opera, maybe she will want to get too acquainted with the wagon master after she finds out what kind of people he associates with. <laughs> Hello, boy, Jimmy. The name is Jameson. What are you doing? Keep your score? Indeed, I am, sir. That's your second one. Oh, it's only fruit juice. I wouldn't rely on that being a fact, sir. Really? Mr. Waterbury is president of our country club. Yes, you'll have to join the club after you're settled. All the best people you know. I can fix it for you. You are planning to live here, aren't you? Well, I mean, how could you consider any place but this lovely home? I know that Heather would simply die away from her beautiful things. And besides, you wouldn't dare take her away from us. Sacramento wouldn't be the same without her. <laughs> oh, come along, Forrest. There's Emily. I want to talk to her about the musical she's giving. Oh, Christopher, this is Mr. and Mrs. Rollins. Mr. Rollins is captain of the polo team. I mean, listen. I say, old man, do you play polo? I never try. I can sit a cow pony when he's cutting out steers. That ought to be a fair start for polo. Mm -hmm. Very good, Mr. Hill. <laughs> Very Mrs. good. Mrs. Cartwright, excuse me. What? Oh, Mrs. Cartwright. I want you to meet Mr. Hale, Mrs. Cartwright. Look, I've just got to talk to you about that benefit. I'll be right back, Christopher. You know, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a confirmed bachelor and would make a very bad husband for any. So I offer you my congratulations. Thank you. And to prove my sincerity, I'd like to assist you in any way I can finding your place in our city. I'm in a position to see that you get established as something you're liking. It's very kind of you. Um, any idea what sort of situation you might have in mind? I hadn't thought about it. Well, it would be simpler if you had a specific profession. But no matter. Whatever you decide, I'll see that you're made welcome in the community. It's glad I am the watch is solid gold. If it wasn't, the plating would be worn thin already, the way you keep toying with it. Just a habit, I guess. I'm curious to know what it is you keep reading on the inside, please. Just a personal message. Are you that ashamed of it that you're afraid to show it? No, Mrs. O'Hara. In fact, I'm very proud of it. I 
never knew one man could be so many different people. So important. Only on a wagon train, I'm afraid. Precisely what I was thinking when I heard you talking to Harry. Of that. When does your boat leave San Francisco to take you back east? Uh, next week, but we're leaving Sacramento tomorrow on the riverboat for San Francisco. Bought to fix the day right here. <laughs> Good. We've got some talking to do. In private. Come along. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Oh, you could leave all that till morning, Jameson. You must be as tired as I am. Very well, ma'am. Heather, this is for you. A ticket? For the riverboat to San Francisco? You well know they're usually too crowded to get room at the last minute. But I'm not going to San Francisco. It's for you. To give to Christopher. Christopher is staying in Sacramento. He's going to marry me. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's something you can do about it. But I thought you approved, Mother. Why, even this party was all your idea. So Christopher could see what he was letting himself in for as soon as possible. You don't think any man is good enough for me, do you? Christopher Hale is. Maybe too good. Considering how little you know about love. Oh, I'm tired of your interfering, Mother. So you can stop right now. I'm going to marry Christopher. I love him. Sure. Sure you do, dear. But the question is, do you love him for him or for yourself? There's a big difference, you know. So you like to be near him because you admire and respect him. And you know you would be marrying more men than you've ever known in your whole life. All this makes you happy. But you love him enough to consider his happiness ahead of yours. Because if you don't, yours is a selfish love that could destroy you both. But I, I know I could make him happy. Will he take you with him on his next wagon train? Oh, of course not. That's how his first wife died. If he would, your marriage might stand a chance. But he's going to give up that life. Why? Because he loves me and he's going to marry me. And that means his love is the greater love. That's what you said, isn't it? I said nothing you didn't know for yourself from the beginning. Oh, yes, I know. That's why I was in such a hurry to make him love me and to marry me. Be thankful that in your haste you never asked him to give up his work. But I'm obliged to ask him not to. Can I do it? Only if you love him enough. I said before, I didn't know whether I was sad or glad that this trip's over. But I know now. That's because it never really is over until that last wagon rolls out and leaves us here all alone. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, seeing that we're rolling out too and leaving you alone. What do you mean, leaving him alone? You think being married to a woman like Heather Mahoney's being left alone? That's right, Bill. Any man as lucky as I am doesn't need sympathy. Especially from a bunch of wagon bums like you three. I can't say I won't miss you, though. Well, we feel the same way, Chris. But I don't think there's any time for a lot of big speeches, do you? No. Grown men just shake hands, say goodbye, I'll see you later. That's a promise, Mr. Chris. And next year when we come through this time, we'll bust in on you and embarrass all your new friends, too. <laughs> just don't bring along that cookbook, that's all. <laughs> I won't tell them. <laughs> Bye. I gotta say more than goodbye, see you later, Mr. Hale. Maybe that means I'm not a grown man, but knowing you has been 
Well, it's been good for me. It's been good for me, too, Duke. Bye, Chris. Bye, Bill. Bill. See you later. Sure. See you later. See you out here, Heather. I had to see you, Christopher. To, to talk to you. I'm glad you came. Because I have something I must say to you. Maybe... this can say it better than I can. I love you. Suppose this is why Mrs. Mahoney asked us to stop here and wait. Must be. Boys, that's who we're waiting for. You know about this? All I know is he owes me for a riverboat ticket I bought and paid for last night. Last night? Yeah. You know about this all along, huh? Sure, sure. <laughs> you mean he didn't tell you? No, and I'll tell you why. Because you're always riding me about keeping my mouth shut. I just wanted to show you I could keep my mouth shut. Huh. Well, how'd you manage it? Because I promised Mrs. O'Hara. And there's just something about that old gal. When she says, go downtown and buy a riverboat ticket, you do. She says, keep your mouth shut and don't talk to anybody, you don't. But what I can't understand is how she knew there wasn't going to be any wet. <laughs> Charlie. Well, not right away, she said, at least. Maybe next year if things go right. Anyway, I don't understand why she knew Mr. Chris would be wanting this riverboat ticket. I can't figure that out. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah? Won't you ever learn when to keep your mouth shut? Yeah. Yeah. 